Hey guys, we are back for kind of the odd woman out of the Venom wave, at least for me. We have got Typhoid Mary today, and this figure is one that, while she looks pretty solid to me, she just doesn't seem to fit with the rest of these. She definitely has ties to Spider-Man and some of these other characters, but in comparison to Spider-Man type characters, symbiotes, she definitely seems kind of weird amongst these other figures. That said, I'm interested in taking a look at this one. So we've got her there in our standard white box for this wave, webbing in the background. We've got the Typhoid Mary logo down on the bottom. We have got product shots right up, the Build-A-Figure and our lineup on the back. So let's pull her out and take a look. All right, guys, here she is out of the package, Typhoid Mary. And after this review, if you're interested in snatching one up for yourself, I will put a link down below to BigBadToyStore.com so you can grab one. But like I said, this is a figure that I kind of feel is the odd man, odd woman out. She just doesn't seem to fit the rest of this wave. She is, of course, tied to Spider-Man. I always think of her as more of a Daredevil villain, though. She does have a much richer past with Daredevil. That said, it really makes no difference. It's just sort of a... A thing that slightly bothers me for no real reason at all. But as far as figures go, she's got some interesting stuff going on here. I don't know that she's going to blow anyone's mind, but she is certainly not as uninteresting as I had originally expected. This isn't a figure that I've ever said, hey, I need a Typhoid Mary. But let's take a look at articulation first, see how she moves around, and then check out the rest of this figure. So as far as articulation goes and moving her around, she isn't going to bring anything special to the table. Uh, if anything, she has a little bit of limitation where I didn't expect them to be. So we've got a head that can swivel. Of course, she does have a full head of hair, so that is going to get in the way. She can look up. She can look down. She can look down better than she, better than she can look up. Arms go out. They can swivel. She has these uh, slightly rubbery shoulder pads here. They do get in the way. The, the arm is capable of moving a full 360, but you're going you're gonna to run into issues there. She has a single-jointed elbow, and it does not even go 90 degrees, really. It is very, very, very limited just because of the sculpt on the jacket. There is, of course, rotation in there. We have hinges and rotation at the wrist. She has a diaphragm joint where she can go backwards, forwards, uh, bobble side to side only slightly, and then rotate a bit. So not a great deal of motion there either. We can kick forward pretty far. We can kick back, thigh cut, double jointed knees, and then we of course have a rocker at the ankle as well as hinge. So in general, she is for the most part, you know, kind of standard when it comes to articulation. She just has a few other limitations where I didn't really expect them to be. And honestly, the elbow is really the biggest thing for me. It just doesn't bend as much or as far as I would like. Now, in the looks department, this is where I really think this figure shines. Typhoid Mary has a number of looks throughout the years. This is a more recent look as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm more, I'm more familiar with the 80s and 90s looks. Honestly, when I think of Typhoid Mary, what I think of are the various looks from the Marvel Masterpieces trading card line. Because uh, I never really read a lot of the stories with her, so that was how I got most of my exposure. And she was in much more revealing clothing in those cards than she is here for sure. Um, I've actually heard of some folks who are unhappy with the fact that she doesn't reveal as much here as she should. But I don't really care about that. Uh, that is not what I'm looking for when it comes to my toys. So we have got her in, you know, what is kind of an interesting look. She does have the leather jacket on. She has got kind of the corset going here. And I think, and I'm assuming a lot of other folks are thinking this as well, is that this is the beginnings of a new body for Emma Frost. Uh, this definitely looks like something that we're going to see on a new White Queen or something like that. We've got her with the fishnets, and this is a telltale quintessential typhoid mary look she's always got fishnets on of some kind we do have the boots down here these uh the cuffs on the boots are just floating pieces but they work just fine they don't really move enough so that it looks like they're gonna move away or anything and then in general i think the overall figure looks pretty solid you know i said from the outset this isn't a figure i've ever said that hey i need a typhoid mary but if she looks good she looks good and i think that she looks pretty solid here you got the sculpted belt back there the pockets on the jeans and then everything about her from the neck down is is sculpted and painted really well. We've got the kind of choker necklace on there. So this is all very quintessential in terms of look for Typhoid Mary. But of course we do have this head sculpt going on, this full head of hair. So there is a lot more to this figure in terms of the looks department than I ever really expected. And speaking of this head, this is where I think the figure really does it for me. Uh, I think it just looks very much like at least as far as I can tell, the modern look for Typhoid Mary, or at least one of the more recent ones. You know, whenever I'm seeing characters who look slightly different than I expect, they've always undergone a bunch of changes since I last read about them. You know, I've said that this is not the Typhoid Mary that I really know from 
you know, when I was younger. But she definitely still has that Typhoid Mary look. We've got that quintessential uh, split down her face with the white paint on her right, your left. We've got those eyes that are painted very cleanly. The lips are painted very cleanly as well. And this is where I should point out that there has been reported and I believe found that there is at least one running change on this figure. I don't think it's going to be a variant. Hasbro doesn't do variants when it comes to their line. Uh, so it's likely a running change where she has uh, eyeshadow around her eyes. This is an early figure. I don't, I don't think that they were out far too long until I got mine. So it's likely a running change that we're going to see more. Uh, it looks to be like digitally printed uh, eyeshadow around both eyes and then her lips have more lipstick on them as well. I'm perfectly fine with this. I think she looks really good. This is a great face sculpt. It's great paint applications. I mean everything is right where it needs to be. Everything's very cleanly applied. The hair doesn't really have much in terms of uh, paint on it but it does have that nice deep red color and it all looks you know just like I would expect a version of Typhoid Mary to look like. So I, I really can't be too upset even though I didn't really need this figure. You know she still looks good. And then as far as accessories goes, we do, of course, have the one that she's been holding this entire time. We have got this sword, and if this looks familiar to you and you saw my Psylocke review recently, you'll know that these are one and the same. So this is the same sword that we got with Psylocke. It's just, you know, a full normal sword. It's not any kind of energy type sword or anything like that. And then instead of the psychic, uh, you know, telekinetic type energy effect around it. This is a fire effect because Typhoid Mary is a pyrokinetic, so she can control and manipulate fire. So it's the exact same thing that we saw with Psylocke. It's the piece of uh, plastic that slips over this sword, so it's meant to go over top of this. You can kind of get it around her wrist as well to make it look like she's actually manipulating the fire with her hands, because that's a power she has as well. So that's kind of a cool thing. It's not meant to do that, but you can do that. Otherwise, I think this looks fine. It's very, uh, you know, fitting for her. It's appropriate to the character, and it's a cool new sword, and I'm really digging this effect piece. I just hope they don't overdo it. So yeah, overall, this is a rather surprisingly good figure. You know, I said it before, and I said it a couple times, this is a figure I didn't really want and I didn't really need. I've never said that I needed Typhoid Mary. I've only been kind of tangentially aware of her in the sense that I know that know who she is, I know how, how she's related to other characters in the Marvel Universe, but she's never been a character I really, really cared about. This figure, though, looks pretty good. It is limited when it comes to articulation, but in terms of how she looks, it's a very clean comic interpretation made into plastic. And I'm all for that. Even if it's a figure I don't really care about, if it looks good, it looks good. And I think this is definitely leaning towards the side of, yeah, it's a, it's a good looking figure. I didn't really care for it, but I'm going to keep it anyway. And of course, I do like that sword and I do like this energy effect they're using. I just hope they don't overuse it. But for now, uh, I am pretty happy with this Typhoid Mary figure. That's not something I expected to say. So that's going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Typhoid Mary figure from Hasbro. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.